Hello everyone and welcome to the 1991 uh, Linares series uh, featuring Vasily Ivanchuk. Uh, the 1991 Linares uh, tournament was a very strong tournament that featured 14 of the strongest players in the world uh, such as world champion Garry Kasparov, Anatoly Karpov, uh, Vishwanathan Anand, Gatakamsky, uh, Yusupov, Belyavsky, uh, Ljubojevic, uh, well, a, lo a lot of strong players. Uh, well, anyway, uh, I already did a video on the, on the first uh, game of this uh, tournament, Ivanchuk's first game in round one. Uh, that's the game against uh, world champion Garry Kasparov. And, uh, well, uh, Garry, at the time this game was played, was rated uh, 2800. So he was the only player in the world with such a rating. And uh, Anatoly Karpov, who was the second rated, uh, had a rating of 2725. So there was a 75 point, point difference. Uh, Vasily Ivanchuk uh, was the fourth uh, favorite, uh, well, if you consider rating, he was uh, 2695. Uh, so more than 100 points uh, below world champion Garry Kasparov. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, you're welcome to check out that game if you haven't. Uh, you can check it out on my channel, I will also put a link in the description below. Uh, the game round one, Ivanchuk versus Kasparov, that's uh, Ivanchuk's immortal game. Uh, so maybe you would prefer to watch that one before you see this one. Uh, this is uh, Ivanchuk versus Karpov. This is round five of the Linares uh, 1991 tournament, and Ivanchuk has uh, Ivanchuk has the white pieces against the former world champion. Uh, Ivanchuk goes d4. We have knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to c3, and bishop to b4. Uh, Karpov goes for the Nimzo Indian. Uh, e3. Uh, Karp of Castles, Bishop to d3, d5, uh, Knight to f3, and c5. Uh, Karpov does uh, what he often does, and, uh, well, you'll see what it is. Uh, Ivanchuk castles, and Karpov plays c captures on d4. Uh, we have e captures on d4, now d captures on c4, uh, Bishop captures on c4, and b6. Karpov is preparing uh, to develop his uh, light square bishop on this beautiful diagonal. And uh, what, what else he did? Well, he created and isolated the d4 pawn, uh, which will, well, he'll, he'll try to make this pawn a target for the rest of the game. This is something Karpov, uh, well, often does. And it will be uh, Ivanchuk's uh, duty to make this, well, pawn seem like a, like a, like a strength rather than a weakness. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, Ivanchuk plays bishop to g5, pinning the knight. Bishop to b7, rook to c1, developing the rook, knight to c6, and now a3. And uh, Karpov plays uh, bishop to e7. Of course, you don't want to capture on c3. Bishop captures on c3 and b captures on c3. Uh, this would only strengthen uh, this d4 pawn. And now there is no dark square bishop to, to contest this dark square bishop of Ivanchuk's on g5. So instead, after a3, Karpov plays a bishop to e7. Uh, we have queen to d3. And, uh, well, this is, uh, well, probably the first moment in the game where uh, Karpov doesn't really play... Well, it's not a bad move, but it's an inaccuracy. Uh, for example, a better move than what he played would be h6. And then, depending on where this bishop goes, uh, for example, either he will capture or, or he will play something like bishop to f4. And then, well, after bishop to d6, uh, Karpov will be able to exchange some pieces and, uh, well, uh, go... Uh, faster into the end game but after queen to d3 karpov played a knight to d5 now opening up an attack on this g5 bishop probably with the idea that if uh, well if bishop captures on e7 is played karpov can always recapture with the knight and all is well uh, but the problem after this knight to d5 move is that ivanchuk played bishop captures on d5 uh, ivanchuk gives up the bishop pair uh, but now bishop captures uh, for example on g5 uh, well wouldn't result in something Karpov would be interested to play. For example, knight captures on g5, now Ivanchuk is threatening checkmate on h7, uh, and after queen captures on g5, uh, Ivanchuk has this in-between move f4 with an attack on the queen, and after queen to e7 and bishop to e4, uh, well, th th there is a, well, a lot of pressure on the king side here, and, uh, well, of course, rook f1, rook h3 is coming. Uh, this would be this wouldn't be something Karpov would enjoy. He would have to push f5 and uh, weaken his uh, kingside position, and also he would create a, a weak pawn here on e6. So instead, after this bishop captures on d5 by Ivanchuk, uh, Karpov played e captures on d5. Now he created uh, a weak pawn of his own, a weak isolated pawn. But uh, well, he does uh, 
uh, he does think that this will give him a better game. Uh, so bishop captures on e7 by Ivanchuk, knight captures on e7, and rook to e1. And all of Ivanchuk's pieces are developed. Both rooks are on open files, and well, Kaspar, uh, Karpov still uh, has to do this. So he goes rook a, rook a to c8, developing the rook. And uh, well, what to play now? Uh, this knight is pretty badly placed on e7, so Karpov is definitely going to look to improve it. Uh, he can't really go to f5, the queen is protecting f5, and uh, well, he'll probably go to g6 or to c6. So Ivanchuk plays h4. Uh, his idea is to push h5 to further limit this knight's movement. Uh, we have h6 by, uh, by Karpov, not allowing any knight g5 ideas. So h6, and uh, Ivanchuk pushes h5, now uh, further constricting this knight's options. Uh, we have rook to c7. Uh, knight to b5 with a tempo on the rook now, rook captures on c1, rook captures on c1, and bishop to a6, now pinning this knight. Uh, Ivanchuk plays a4, uh, we have bishop captures on a4, queen captures on a4, and knight to f5. Now the knight is, well, uh, in, in the game, and, uh, well, this is a pretty good square for the knight. Uh, so g3 by Ivanchuk, not allowing this knight to jump to h4 to exchange uh, even more pieces. So g3 is played, uh, knight back to e7, as the knight doesn't really have any, any more future on f5. Uh, knight to e5, now, now by Ivanchuk, and now Ivanchuk has a beautiful knight here on e5. And well, uh, since knight to g6 isn't really possible, knight to c6 is definitely impossible. There's really no way to dislodge this knight from e5 other than by pushing f6. And uh, well, Karpov is still a bit reluctant to do this. So queen to d6. Uh, we have queen to a6. Ivanchuk uh, wants to gobble off this a7 pawn. It's a very juicy pawn. Uh, but again, he gets knight to f5 by Karpov. Now Karpov says, okay, grab the a7 pawn, I'm gonna grab the d4 pawn. Uh, which, of course, uh, the central pawn is a, is a bit more important. Uh, it's uh, creating an outpost for that knight on e5. So queen to d3, defending d4. Uh, we have knight back to e7 and queen to f3 now. And, uh, well, here, uh, Karpov really doesn't like that knight on e5, so uh, he still doesn't want to go for f6. Uh, he plays a5 first. Uh, we have king to g2, Ivanchuk improves the position of the king, uh, and, well, if, if the position suddenly goes into the endgame, his king will be closer to jump into the game. And, okay, now Karpov does play f6, as there is really nothing better here. Uh, we have knight to d3, uh, probably now going for ideas like knight f4 and knight to g6, or maybe knight to e6 if the rook comes to e1 or if the queen goes to e3. Uh, well, it all depends on what uh, Karpov plays. Uh, rook to c8, uh, Karpov uh, offers the exchange of rooks, and uh, this is, well, this is where things get interesting. Exchanging the rook, uh, well, the position will still favor, be, be favorable to white, but Ivanchuk uh, doesn't go for the rook exchange. He plays rook to e1, uh, getting the rook now on the other open file, and Karpov immediately goes uh, for that pawn on d4, rook to c4. And, well, here uh, Ivanchuk would probably, uh, I do have to mention that both players were uh, extremely low on time here. Uh, for example, with a move like queen to e3, this defends d4 and also attacks this knight on e7. And this would be a pretty good chance uh, for Karpov to, to really blunder. For example, knight to f5, and, uh, well, this comes with a tempo on the queen, but black is lost. For example, queen to e8, check, and if you play king to h7, you get queen g6, check. And, uh, well, this is completely over. Uh, after, for example, king g8, you get a rook e8, check, uh, you lose the queen, uh, this is completely over. And uh, after this queen to e8 check, if you play something like queen to f8, uh, well, this is, isn't really any better. You get queen to e6 with check, and now after queen f7 you grab the knight. Uh, this is game over. So, after this rook to c4 move, uh, after this rook to c4 move, uh, Ivanchuk didn't play uh, queen to e3, he played knight to f4. Uh, and, of course, Karpov grabbed uh, the pawn. I mean, it's a free pawn. And you might uh, get the idea that Ivanchuk played uh, knight to f4 to play a move like rook to e6. Uh, but the problem is, after queen to d7 uh, and rook to b6, uh, well, this would be... this would still be okay for black. And it's... it's... well, 
I don't know if if, if this is something I Ivanchuk was going for, but he didn't play this. Uh, after this, rook captures on d4, uh, Ivanchuk didn't play rook to e6, uh, rather he played knight to g6, and this is well. Uh, he's attacking this knight on e7 twice now with the knight and the rook, and uh, well, Karpov captures the knight, I mean, I mean, wh what is Ivanchuk thinking here? Knight captures, pawn captures, and uh, well, black is a pawn up, uh, and uh, well, Karpo, uh, Ivanchuk does have a double g pawn, uh, but he's already threatening rook to e8, winning the queen. Uh, so this must be stopped. Karpo plays king to f8, and Ivanchuk jumps with queen to h5, uh, queen to f5, sorry. Now threatening uh, queen to c8 with checkmate. Uh, so again, this has to be stopped. Karpov plays rook to c4. And uh, well, this is uh, this is a very nice moment in the game. Uh, probably uh, most of us would play rook to e6 uh, with the idea that after the queen moves, uh, well, you either pick up the b6 pawn or maybe you do have some ideas of sacrificing the rook on f6 and pushing g7. Uh, but the problem is after uh, queen to d8, uh, none of this really works. Uh, the queen is protecting the d5 pawn, so queen to d5 capturing is impossible. The queen is protecting the b6 pawn, and the queen is protecting this f6 pawn from eventual rook captures on f6 ideas. So uh, Ivancho probably saw that this rook to e6 wasn't really working. So instead, after rook captures on c4, uh, Ivancho plays what I considered to be a, a, an Ivanchuk move. Uh, he played g4. And what's the idea behind g4? I really don't know. Uh, I mean, probably, he probably wanted to give Karpov a chance to, to, to make a mistake. Or maybe if Karpov would somehow attack his queen with his queen, uh, that he can, well, sometimes recapture with g captures on f5 and create, well, a strong pawn on g6. I have no idea. Uh, but whatever the idea behind Ivanchuk's g4 was completely threw Karpo off of, off of his game. Uh, like I said, he w he really was in uh, time trouble. And uh, here, well, Karpo played queen to f4. Uh, he decided to go for this g4 pawn and thought that this would be enough. Uh, I mean, he is up a pawn, so why not? Uh, but the problem is, uh, here I don't really know if Karpo resigned the game immediately. I believe he resigned the game, but he was also extremely low on time, uh, because here Ivanchuk has queen captures on d5, and this is completely lost for Karpov. Uh, Ivanchuk would be threatening queen to f7 checkmate, and the problem is, after queen captures on g4 with check and king to f1, uh, you can't grab this pawn. Uh, if you grab the pawn, you lose the, uh, you lose the rook with, uh, with queen captures on c4. And if you don't, well, what do you play here? Still, queen, queen to f7 checkmate is the threat. Uh, if you try another check, queen to h3, you get king to e2. And if you try another check, for example, queen g4, now you get king to d3. And uh, now Ivanchuk's king is attacking this rook. Uh, I mean, the queen is attacking it as well, so the rook is attacked twice. Uh, black is losing a rook if he doesn't want to be checkmated with uh, queen to f7. So... After this queen to f4 move, uh, I believe Karpov did resign, but he was in severe time trouble as well. Uh, probably why he played uh, this weird queen to f4 move. Uh, but uh, my favorite uh, thing is that Ivanchuk in this position played g4. It's uh, such a manly move. It's it's wow. Well, uh, I'm interested. Uh, what are your thoughts about uh, this g4 move? Why was it played? So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to say that uh, Ivanchuk won Linares 1991 uh, with a score of 13 and a half points. Uh, that's uh, six win wins and seven draws. And he won it with uh, half a point lead ahead of uh, world champion Garry Kasparov, uh, who, <laughs> who only lost one game in this tournament, and that was uh, the game in round one against Vasily Ivanchuk, uh, the Ivanchuk Immortal, uh, which you are free to check out. So yeah, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check, uh, well, this will be Ivanchuk's Immortal right up there, and the other one will be one of my previous videos. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon.